At the dawn of humanity 790,000 years ago, Earth's magnetic field broke down, an event that may have led to the eventual rise to Homo sapiens. The abrupt divergence of ancient human lineages continues to be one of the great enigmas of human evolution. But when studying the ancient past, one time period comes up over and over. As we shall see, the world experienced several few millennia of apocalyptic conditions around 790,000 years ago, triggered by a reversal of the Earth's magnetic poles and a meteor impact. The last permanent magnetic field reversal took place about 790,000 years ago, but it also came very close to reversing 42,000 years ago. The geomagnetic reversal 42,000 years ago triggered a series of dramatic events that had far-reaching consequences for our planet. The ozone layer was destroyed, electrical storms raged across the tropics, solar winds generated spectacular auroras, arctic air poured across North America, ice sheets and glacier surged and weather patterns shifted violently. The Earth is a giant magnet because its core is solid iron, and swirling around it is an ocean of molten metal. This churning creates a huge magnetic field, one that wraps around the planet and protects it from charged cosmic rays coming in from outer space. Sometimes, for reasons scientists do not fully understand, the magnetic field becomes unstable and its north and south poles can flip. The last major reversal, though it was short, happened around 42,000 years ago. During these events, life on Earth was exposed to intense ultraviolet light, megafauna went extinct, while humans sought protection in caves. The North Pole wandered across North America, out towards New York, and then back again across to the west, then zoomed down through the Pacific really fast to Antarctica, and stayed there for about 400 years, and then shot back up through the Indian Ocean back up to the North Pole. In fact, when the poles reversed temporarily, trees revealed a prolonged spike in atmospheric radiocarbon levels caused by the collapse of Earth's magnetic field, as the pole switched 42,000 years ago. Tropical Pacific rain belts and the southern ocean westerly winds abruptly shifted at the same time, bringing arid conditions to places like Australia at the same time as a range of megafauna, including giant kangaroos and giant wombats went extinct. Further north, the vast Laurentide ice sheet rapidly grew across the eastern North America, while in Europe the Neanderthal spiraled into extinction. With essentially no magnetic field, our planet totally lost its shield against cosmic radiation and many more of these very penetrating particles from space could access the top of the atmosphere. High-energy cosmic rays from the galaxy, and also enormous bursts of cosmic rays from solar flares were able to penetrate the upper atmosphere, charging the particles in the air and causing chemical changes that drove the loss of stratospheric ozone. These climate events are consistent with the environmental shifts observed in many natural climate and environmental change records. These conditions would have also extended the dazzling light shows of the aurora across the world. At times, nights would have been as bright as day. These same environmental effects would have happened 790,000 years ago, except they last 22,000 years instead of 400 years. During that era, Homo erectus ruled the planet, rather than the Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo sapiens. The full reversal of Earth's magnetic field took far longer than was previously thought, scientists discovered. By analyzing ancient volcanic rocks, researchers found the reversal took about 22,000 years to complete, with the field starting to collapse about 795,000 years ago. Earth's magnetic field is believed to be generated within the planet's iron core. It extends far out into space, and helps protect the atmosphere from the solar wind, a stream of charged particles from our Sunday. Without the magnetic field, the particles would strip away the atmosphere, allowing harmful radiation through and eventually leaving Earth a lifeless, barren planet, as happened on Mars billions of years ago. The magnetic field is dynamic. It moves around and becomes stronger and weaker over time. It is also known to reverse, with the magnetic north and south pole flipping positions. This has happened many times over the planet's history, however, because of the timescales involved, little is known about exactly what happens when a reversal takes place. 
but lava flows act as a time capsule of the planet, providing information on the position of Earth's magnetic field, at the point it solidifies. Measurements show the magnetic field started to collapse about 795,000 years ago. It became unstable and there were two partial reversals over the course of 18,000 years, before a full reversal that took about 4,000 years to complete. The 22,000 years between the onset of instability in the outer core dynamo was not a surprise. However, the complexity of the geologic record between about 795,000 and 773,000 years ago is surprising. The reversal process was longer more complex than previously imagined. The dramatic changes and unprecedented high UV levels would have caused ancient humans to seek shelter in caves just like the more recent flip, and it must have seemed like the end of days. This occurred 781,000 years ago, when ancient humans split into two groups, one that became the Denisovans and Neanderthals, and one that became us. Indeed, Genetic evidence suggests that Denisovan mitochondrial DNA diverged from that of modern humans and Neanderthals about 779,300 years ago. This common ancestor still remains a mystery, but it must have been something closely resembling Homo antecessor, who split off from the modern human line around 850,000 years ago. The cause for the sudden split in early humans is unknown. But one plausible explanation for the emergence of several human groups is a sudden mutation. The mutation hypothesis is the most economical explanation of why humans suddenly diverged around 800,000 years ago. Fossilized skulls reveal little about the brain underneath, but a gene mutation may have changed critical neural processes, such as speech and language. Experiments with minibrains in the lab have proven that small mutations created the differences between Neanderthal and modern human brains. Moreover, the mitochondrial DNA of Neanderthals and modern humans became incompatible during a particularly long, cold ice age, leading to the biological separation of those groups around 400,000 years ago. Very likely, the same genetic mutations happened 800,000 years ago too, resulting in population bottlenecks. If you are learning something from this video and want to see more like this, hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Remarkably, Earth was also pummeled with meteors at the same time, 790,000 years ago. One day, in the late Pleistocene, an asteroid 1.2 miles across split the sky over modern-day Southeast Asia. The gigantic space rock came in at a shallow angle, gouging out a crater more than 10 miles wide, and showering the surrounding region with debris. The distribution of the tectites and the size of the strewn field indicate that the Earth-striking body was at least a kilometer in size and released an impressive 1 million megatons of TNT energy within seconds of impact. The meteor slammed into Earth with such force, that the explosion blanketed about 10% of the planet with shiny black lumps of rocky debris. Known as tectites, these glassy blobs of melted terrestrial rock were strewn from Southeast Asia to Eastern Antarctica, and from the Indian Ocean to the Western Pacific. The force of the impact is thought to have created a rim measuring more than 300 feet tall, and hurled glass blobs thousands of miles. Some left Earth's atmosphere and acquired their flanged edge on re-entry into the atmosphere. The largest region where tectites are found is known as the Australasian Tectite Strewn Field. It's the largest of its kind, covering a tenth of the planet's surface. Some of these tectites have even been found as far away as the coast of Antarctica. While the impact was not on the level to cause a mass extinction event, it was significant enough to have left a sizable crater. In fact, the findings led the researchers to conclude that there were multiple cosmic impacts. In addition to the events in the Australasian and Central American regions, a smaller collision at around the same time created the Darwin Crater in Tasmania. According to the scientists, the consequences were dire. At the local level, there was wildfire and earthquakes for hundreds of kilometers surrounding the impact site, and an ocean impact would have caused tsunamis hundreds of meters high. At the global level, dust and gases were ejected into the upper levels of the atmosphere, blocking sunlight and lowering surface temperatures. Global biomass production was also affected, although according to the scientists, 
it did not result in a global mass extinction as in the case of the dinosaurs, approximately 65 million years ago. The scenario played out at a time when Homo erectus had already spread from Africa to China, and even island Southeast Asia. Archaeological artifacts found with tectites in southern China indicate that a Homo erectus population was living in the area during and after the impact. Stone tools have been found within the debris field, along with a charcoal layer likely caused by fires from the impact. It has even been suggested that the subsequent local deforestation, after the fires allowed this population easier access to stones useful for tool making. Nobody knows whether the meteor hit the ground and broke up, or exploded just above ground level, but either way, the event was totally devastating. It would have killed off life close to the impact area, and it must have been a terrible place to have been living at the time. But this event, along with the magnetic pole reversal, also probably gave rise to the human group that led to Homo sapiens. It is all in how you draw up the tree, with some seeing Homo sapiens as a branch on the tree, while others draw it with Homo sapiens as the main trunk, all the way back to the split just prior to 800,000 years ago.